Hello everyone and welcome to the DiPi workshop. My name is Eleftherios Garifalidis. I'm a professor at Intelligence Systems Engineering at Indiana University. And I will talk to you about the workshop and provide an overview. So what you should expect to hear from this talk? You should learn what is DiPi and how to install how to navigate the DiPi workshop space and plan, and plan uh, your week. And I will also provide a very first primer in diffusion-weighted MRI, also known as DMRI, DWMRI, DWI, and DTI, and so on. So welcome to the workshop, and thank you for joining. I hope you have a wonderful experience and you learn uh, many new uh, things. So Diffusion Imaging Python is a scientific image software library in Python. It contains general purpose methods for spatial normalization signal by one is a very specialized part in Diffusion MRI, but there is also a general part that has a scope, uh, its scope is its uh, medical limit. So let's look at Fusion MRI. In DIPI, you will find methods implemented and ready to be used for data pre-processing, such as parts to self denoising, keeps and ranking, and so on. Voxel signal reconstruction methods, such as diffusion ketosis imaging, Q-space trajectory imaging, uh, which is a new method that we will uh, learn more about this week. Uh, tracking algorithms such as the particle filtering tracking algorithm, tractography segmentation methods such as quick bundles and record bundles, and tractography registration such as streamline based linear registration, uh, bundle work, which is a new non rigid registration method of, of, of uh, bundles. And uh, you can also do statistical analysis and tractometry using uh, one for one and AFQ for uh, group comparisons. So uh, in addition, we have this general purpose imaging methods. So you can use the API to do a fine and rich registration. You can denoise um, 3D volumes, and you can also use uh, for visualization. You can use Horizon, which is our uh, visualization system based on Huey to uh, visualize any, any sorts of images and data. Also, you can do tissue segmentation and classification using a hidden mark of random fields method or a new uh, deep learning methods. So um, DiPi has uh, been developed in parallel with Nibubble. So we use Nibubble as well to provide access to Pythonic APIs for new images and data scientists. So this is uh, why DiPi was created to provide those, those APIs so that new images can, uh, can do um, their work in an easier uh, fashion and at lower level. And um, now, DiPi contains algorithms that have to do with image processing, primarily 3D, 4D image processing, and computational anatomy, primarily brain anatomy. And it has its own machine learning and optimization methods. However, it does connect with machine learning algorithms such as scikit-learn and TensorFlow for Cycling for machine learning, general purpose machine learning, and TensorFlow for deep learning. And also for optimization, we do connect to CVXPy and, and use that. Now, the core data structure used in DiPi, as you find in most scientific packages in the Python uh, ecosystem, is with NumPy, with NumPy arrays. So um, we have managed 
to have a growing ecosystem, to establish an ecosystem that uses DiPi. For example, there are projects now like GPU streamlines. For example, this is a project by NVIDIA. Um, QtPi, Fury, BrainLife, uh, DSimPy, DMyPy, PyFQ, Prequal, NDMG, QSI Prep, Jactoflow, MNE Python, and so on. There are many projects that use uh, DiPy and depend on DiPy. Um, so we can summarize that we have around 400 to 500 public projects using um, DiPy. And also, uh, DiPy is used in the industry and the clinic uh, for about eight to 10 years. So it's, I would say, 10 years in the industry, eight years in, in the clinic. Um, so here is a simple use case. Imagine you have some diffusion data and you want to denoise them, do motion correction, register with the T1, reconstruct, do a signal reconstruction with, reconstruction with DTI or QBOL CSA or any other reconstruction method, then do some tracking, reuse deterministic tracking, do probabilistic tracking, do different sorts of tracking, uh, then do some segmentation of the tractography. And then maybe you want to do connectivity analysis, or you can go directly to tractometry, um, which is the study of the of brain's pathways along, along the length. Um, you can do all those things with DiPi. Also, what you will need to do is inspect your data. So you will need to inspect the data as they're running through the different uh, series of this algorithm. And for that, we are providing tools to do the visualization. And so, so you can visualize and inspect. And DiPi provides that as well. So this here is just one of the parts. There are many different uh, algorithms that you may need to use uh, to do uh, an analysis correctly. So this is not just one path, it's a, there are many different paths that you can take. And what is happening now in the field of diffusion MRI, there is always a new block being created. There are always new blocks. For example, recent years, you have to also do Gibbs uh, unringing. You have to do a series of pre-processing steps before even uh, starting to get into signal reconstruction. So those are things we will learn um, during this workshop. Now, here's some installation instructions. If, you are, if you're using Python, you already probably have an Anaconda Python distribution somewhere in your system or in the cloud. Maybe your university is providing you access to a cluster with Anaconda already installed. If, if that is the case, you may ignore the step. If not, uh, you may want to install it. You basically just um, go and install it from this link. You do not need uh, administrative access. You can just install it as with user access, with simple user access, and, um, and that should be enough. And then all you need to do, if you are on Windows, you just open an, a a terminal called Anaconda prompt that is provided with Anaconda. Or if you are in Linux or Mac, you open your standard terminal, and then you can go and do pip install DiPi, that which adds the modeling analysis capabilities, and then pip install Fury that adds the visualization capabilities, and you are done. That's the installation you, you need to do. It's, it's a very straightforward. Now, here is a tip. If you already have DiPi installed, then all you need to do is add this capital minus U, and it will upgrade. So pip install minus capital U DiPi will upgrade DiPi. And if you install DiPi correctly, you should expect to see this uh, message successfully installed DiPi 150. 
All right. So here are some ways to use DiveBy. One way is to, to use DiveBy is to create or edit your Python scripts or Jupyter notebooks. For example, you could run a Python script from a terminal. Here is running our quick start tutorial, which is avail available here in DiveBy.org tutorials. You go with a quick, quick start, you run it with just Python quick start, or you can run it with IPython, or you can run it as uh, a Jupyter notebook, and, uh, and you can go to the tutorials and, and see all these tutorials and navigate, basically scan these tutorials, see which ones uh, you, you, you like, and edit them, update them with your data. So that's what most people have been doing using DiPy. Now, there are these other two new methods you can use our new command line interfaces, which allow you to run interfaces. You don't need to know programming. And this is happening here. This is, uh, for example, a DiPy info command, and you get the help using minus H. Or if you include a, a data set, you will see some information about the data set. So these tutorials are available here in the DiPy web website in the latest interfaces. So basically I went here where it says CLI, and here you see these uh, tutorials that are uh, about running the uh, command lines. So for example, if you go, if you go here, um, you will see there is uh, the series of commands you have to run to then uh, to then do your analysis and then a series of commands how to visualize your bundles. And you will see that all these commands start with dipy underscore. So if you are in your system, if you just say dipy underscore, you will get all the command lines that are available. So what else? Um, What else? So then beyond the command line interfaces, we have also web interfaces, and those are available on BrainLife.io. Those are, you don't need even to know how to, to open a terminal for those. You don't even to install that by there. You just go upload your data and run an analysis. And so those are available on BrainLife.io. Here is an example. Let's say you want to fit uh, diffusion ketosis images. You can upload your data here, and then you press execute, and then you will get the entire analysis done in the cloud. And the results will be saved on the cloud, and you can directly use that. And this doesn't require any programming or uh, or any system experience any terminal using any such experience. Okay, so, so those are the three different uh, methods. So important links for you to have is the main website, dipy.org. There is also an interactive chat room in gitter.am dipy dipy. And uh, this is what is going to be used also during the workshop. There is an integrated version for the workshop. And we have also a discussion forum, which is in GitHub DiPy discussions. Now, it's very important also to support DiPy. We need your support. We need your encouragement. And, and therefore, if you use DiPy, please cite the main paper, which is the DiPy paper from, from Tears in, in Neuroinformatics. And also, please cite the visualization paper, which just came out in 2021. And this paper explains uh, how we design the visualization uh, engine that DiPy is using. All right. So now a bit more about the workshop itself. We have um, a five-day workshop. So it's five days of DiPy methods and diffusion MRI theory. 
which means you will learn you will learn a bit about the math behind you will learn about uh, a bit about the physics behind diffusion MRI and uh, and and the algorithms okay but also you will have tutorials you will have demos you will have examples that you can run now the schedule overview is available on the workshops page which you can access directly from here and the full schedule uh, is also available in a PDF form, which is available here. Now, um, that has information about the speakers, uh, their inventions, and so on. So it's, it's more detailed. But the quick summary is available here. If you go to the workshop, uh, you will see that uh, every day you have a talk or a couple of talks, and then you have a Q&A section, which is live. Some, so, some talks are completely live. And uh, also you have at 3 p.m. Uh, another Q&A section that is for the entire day. And you have a live session with demos uh, at 4 p.m. And that's the same every day. So make sure you don't miss this opportunity to go and ask questions uh to the speakers okay so now going back to the presentation uh, we have 25 speakers eight keynote speakers um, we have professor landon landon landman talking about um data harmonization we have Professor O'Donnell talking about uh, deep learning and white matter parcellation. Um, we have Professor Haye who is talking about um, he's talking about constraint optimization for diffusion MRI. We have uh, Professor Sealing who is talking about um, he's talking about data um you know challenges in different challenges that we can find in diffusion mri um we we see dr aidogan who will talk about um, parallel transport tractography uh, we have uh, dr Sieslak who will talk about a qsi prep pre-processing and some of his methods um Professor Canales Rodriguez will talk about Roomba, which is uh, a spherical convolution technique. And uh, Dr. Kirkella, who will talk about Q-space uh, trajectory imaging and how this was implemented and deployed in, in DiPi. So really exciting talks uh, this year, and these talks will go live, so make sure you uh, follow them and you, you listen to them. Okay. So here is about the DiPi workshop space. Uh, so login, this is a slide about login and workshop. So basically the workshop space is available at DiPi.org. So all you're gonna do after registration, you go to DiPi.org and you go to login here. When you go to login, you have to authenticate yourself and then you will go to this profile icon. You will see a profile icon on the right. It will be. It will appear here. You have this profile icon, and then you will select workshop space, and then you will go to the workshop space. Okay, in the workshop space, you will see this new region in the website where you have these blue letters: home, schedule, courses, chat, and so on. So home. Home here provides the Zoom links and courses will provide direct access to the live and pre-recorded talks, okay? To the whole educational experience. Also, there is this integrated chat that you can use directly and um, during the workshop, okay? So here's how to plan your week. Don't forget the direct workshop a detailed workshop PDF is available here. During this online workshop, you will be able to attend a combination of live and pre-recorded talks. I remind you that. 
Uh, each section will be followed by a live um, Q&A sessions. And it will be Q&A sessions and available at 3 p.m. every day after each talk and at 3 p.m. If you are new to DiPi, we recommend watching the talks in a sequential order. Start from Monday, go from 10 a.m. and day 11 a.m. So just sequentially go from day to day uh, as listed in the schedule. Those who are already familiar with DiPi can jump directly to the talks of their interest. They don't need to go sequentially. The pre-recorded talks will be available at the beginning of the day. All keynote talks will stream live. All Q&A, everything live will be streaming live. All right. So that was about the workshop. And now let's talk a bit about diffusion weighted MRI. So diffusion weighted MRI is an MRI uh, acquisition method that can be acquired, that can generate data from an MRI scanner. That MRI scanner can be any type of, uh, nearly any type of MRI scanner. And as it is available in most clinics and hospitals in the world, uh, diffusion MRI is a four-dimensional technique. And I will explain you uh, a bit more about that. The data are acquired in this large, uh, magnet that is available, it's a superconductive magnet available in, in the MRI scanner. And that superconductive magnet is generating a static magnetic field, but also it's programmable. We can program an MRI scanner and we can change the way this magnet magnetic field looks. So we can create a gradient to that magnetic field. We can change how the, the magnetic field is operating at its location of the magnet. By doing that, and in doing so, we have to create, to add this, this gradient. Now, this gradient um, has many names in diffusion MRI. And actually, the reason why we have four dimensional data sets in diffusion MRI is because these four dimensional data sets are, are a series of 3D volumes, and each volume is acquired for a different magnetic gradient direction. In diffusion MRI, we use additional gradients. So in standard MRI, you use gradients to encode position. But in diffusion MRI, we have some additional gradients that change how the images look. So if you see one volume here is acquired with a gradient at uh, Q1. This volume is acquired with a gradient at Q2, Q3, and so on. This is changing the way the images, the change of that gradient changes how the images look. And what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using all those 3D volumes together to then acquire what is known as the diffusion signal, which is basically is a, a signal for its IJK position in the 3D world. Now, what you should also know is that, of course, these cues are not time, are gradient directions. And like as in all fields, we like changing terms and notations. So here, G, that gradient is, you can see that this, related to Q. So when we talk about Q space, we're talking about the space of gradient directions that are used to acquire the different volumes for the diffusion MRI data. And what you can see here, there is this equation. This equation is basically the gradient, uh, diffusion gradient times some constants here. And or some acquisition parameters. And we can see that Q and G are parallel vectors. Also, what we can see is that Q is related to what is known as the B value um, and is parallel to 
the unit uh, gradient direction. So at the end, what you can learn is, what you can remember is that Q and G are very similar. Uh, and also Q is related to the B value, which is, if you look at your diffusion data, you always uh, have B values provided in one way or another. Now, um, the way we sample in QSpace creates many different imaging techniques uh, in diffusion weight MRI. So here are some examples. We have A here, we have diffusion, a type of diffusion spectrum imaging, which requires many Q spec space vectors in a Cartesian tweet. In B here, we have an example of high angular diffusion imaging. Here we have 65 Q space vectors in a single cell, in a single spherical cell. Here you have, you have two cells. Um, then in D you have cube ball, a type of cube ball imaging that requires a 500 here. Here it doesn't really require 500, but here we visualize in 500 Q space vectors. So the way you are sampling in that Q space, the way you are putting your vectors uh, can change the analysis strategy. You may need to use different reconstruction, different fitting models. You may need to fit different models in your data, depending on, on, on the way your uh, Q space vectors look like. So remember also that each Q space vector represents an entire volume of data sets. All right, an entire, of course, 3D volume. And then you have, of course, techniques that work in most of these Q sampling um, examples, uh, such as DTI. Uh, which requires a very small amount of samples in QSpace. And you have new techniques, advanced techniques like QSpace trajectory imaging, which requires time varying QSpace vectors. And we will hear about that, uh, I think, on Tuesday. So this may all seem a bit complicated, but don't worry, everything will be clarified. The DIPI team is here for you to answer your questions. And we will be able to answer questions such as how to resolve crossing angles, how to reduce false positive symptomatography, how to do an accurate segmentation, which metric to use or which metrics to use, and how to perform statistical analysis for your group comparisons. Um, here is also a fun, fun fact about the workshop's background image. If you go to the workshop image this year, uh, we try to change the image every year. We have this image. So this image was made by Daipai's Brahms Chandio, who is a PhD candidate at Indiana University. And it, uh, it was featured as a top entry to the Brain Initiative uh, photo and video context. And it was also included to the NIH, to the official NIH uh, brain calendar, which is actually available to, um, to order if you live in the US. So thank you very much. Welcome again. And uh, see you in the next talk.